allow me to wish you a very happy new year to you and your families although it's the first week of uh, february already 2010 2020 is running but i've not posted anything over the last one month it was the beginning to the year so welcome to my channel and you have not if you've not already subscribed please do subscribe there will be a lot of new content really amazing uh, content coming up in the next um, 12 months and we hope that will be an easier year for migrants and members of their family we hope that countries will continue to take um, policies that have the protection of people at the center of it so what do i want to speak about today and i would like to introduce us to the concept of labor migration what is it many times we you know we talk about domestic workers construction workers moving to the middle east i i live in the horn of africa and many times as air, at airports across the horn you see lots and lots of young women especially uh you know traveling to the gulf countries and most of them are going to work as domestic workers so what is this about so labor mi migration as as a concept is when people leave home and go to other countries to seek prospects economic prospects and how is this organized there are those who go alone by themselves and find a job but increasingly a lot of uh, migration of uh, workers labor migrants or uh, la migra migrant labor migrant workers <laughs> uh, it's, it's often different depending on uh, uh, different agencies is being organized by what we call private employment agencies and those these are organizations that seek out opportunities in dubai in qatar in saudi arabia in many other parts of especially the the middle east or what is called the gulf cooperation council and then they recruit labor in kenya in ethiopia in uganda in sudan increasingly somalia as well and link the migrants the potential migrants to the positions that have opened in the middle east often they pay a fee a recruitment fee which uh, for instance the ILO um, speaks against that there shouldn't the cost of recruiting a worker should not be borne by themselves but by their employer so we've seen some of those uh, private employment agencies charging a fee but that is something that countries are working against because it just makes it just makes it very expensive for for potential migrant workers what has been the main challenge uh there i mean there are many people who um demonize private employment agencies but the reality is that so many tens of thousands probably even hundreds of thousands of workers we really don't have the figures of of, of migrant workers in the Middle East from the Horn of Africa would not get opportunities without private employment agencies. I mean, where would they start? The challenge is in the fact that at times and often times, the contracts that are given to people before they leave are often not verified and at times they've just been completely fake. These are for non-existent jobs and that's a problem. The other problem is because the the private employment agencies at times do not have a an ongoing link with uh, the receiving end and so migrant workers at times they face um they face abuses they find out that if they're going as a, as a domestic worker maybe they have to do something else there's been cases of uh, being exposed to prostitution etc a longer working hours less pay than that was stipulated at the contract so, so those are some of the challenges that have that have been emerging and countries in the horn of africa have been trying to regulate in a great deal how private employment agencies operate ensuring that the contracts are, are verified mostly by the ministries of labor and to the extent that now private employment agencies even have to pay a deposit that into a fund that would be used in case the migrant worker faces challenges and they do not have money to come back home uh, so that the, it, it would be used to to essentially evacuate them from uh, the country that they are working in now um there's something else that is very central in um, in labor migration and these are agreements that countries of origin and countries of destination whether it's in dubai in qatar 
enter with each other. And this is essentially at the heart of it is to regulate labor, but also very important to ensure that there is protection of, of, of labor migrants. And how does this work? So if country X indicates that we want so many construction workers, country Y says we can provide you with these uh, workers, we're going to train them, that's really essential, you know, uh, introducing skills to whoever is going to work. And then they come together in uh, an agreement. It could be uh, an exchange of letters, a bilateral labor agreement, a memorandum of understanding, whatever it is. In as some are binding and others are not binding. And then they stipulate what is it the can the, the, the sending countries are going to do to ensure that that the labor migration process happens, um, uh, you know, as as for the you know. It ensures protection, it ensures that the skills are what is demanded. Um, some have gone ahead to stipulate, uh, you know, facilitation of uh, remittances or sending ma money back home by the migrant workers. There are those that entrench protection for their citizens, but unfortunately, many of them fall shy of that. And so they would speak to a terms of service, but really don't speak to international instruments uh, that, you know, international agreements that protect uh, people as workers, so labor standards, or even unfortunately, some of them are just devoid of any human rights, uh, you know, requirements as it were. And that has left labor migrant or migrant workers at the mercy of their employers. And, and we've had, we've had, we've seen just so many cases of, of people abused or some, some killed, unfortunately. But there are increasingly efforts towards ensuring that um, uh, migrants are protected. Mm -hmm. Countries in the Horn of Africa are looking at how they can strengthen their consular services so that there is more help for those migrant workers that may need them. And uh, there is a system that has been a bother to most of us who work in the migration space. And that's the system in the Middle East that's called the Kafala system. And so, what is the kafala system? The kafala system is one that requires a migrant worker to um, stick or stay with one employer. So, if someone is uh, recruited, given a contract by household X, they cannot change. They cannot decide, I don't like what I'm doing here, I'm going to work in the next household. So, it really ties your... your a worker's time of stay in a country to the first employer. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem is that if one is dissatisfied with the working conditions, they can't quit. Because if they want to quit, they'll have to terminate that contract, go back home, and then try to enter these countries under a different employer. And we all know how challenging that can be. And that has just meant that people are trapped in uh, conditions of work that they really do not like. The Global Compact on Migration has called upon countries, especially those in the Gulf Cooperation Council or the GCC, that's a word you will continue hearing in this challenge, to try and see how the kafala system can be lifted to ensure that there is more protection for people. And um, last year, Qatar, the state of Qatar, was one of those that said, you know, yeah, we, we recognize the protection challenges that the kafala system presents for labor migrant workers, and we are willing to look at it and, and see what, you know, what is it that we can change. Well, of course, protecting the employer who pays a lot to, you know, um, cover the cost of travel, cover the cost of recruitment, often times, but at the same time protect our worker just in case labor relations go sour. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a little introduction to labor migration. There is a lot, it's a very loaded topic. And on my next video, which I hope you'll have subscribed to my channel to watch, we'll delve a little bit longer or, or more on aspects of social protection, uh, remittances, can uh, migrant workers join trade unions, what's the role of trade unions, workers' organizations in uh, protecting labor migrant workers. So we'll stop uh, here for now. It's, um, it's supposed to be summer in Nairobi, but we still have the rain. So I hope you're, you, you're all well wherever you are. And I invite you to once again, please subscribe to my channel.